Welcome to the Mindful Healers Podcast with Dr. Jesse Mahoney and Dr. Ni Cheng Lang. We are here to help you learn to pause and be present, awaken your breath, and harness the ripple effects of mindfulness for radiant health. We get you. We know you. We are you. We have both been successful on the surface, yet struggling underneath. We have both had cluttered brains, been overwhelmed, and exhausted. We are healers who have found solutions and want to share them with you. Join us here to discover a better way. Welcome to the Mindful Healers Podcast. Today, we are going to talk with a special guest about how to be intentional and support yourself well during times of change. Nothing in today's episode should be construed as medical advice. And before we get started, I just wanted to celebrate that the day we are recording this episode, we will reach 100,000 downloads of this podcast. And so I wanted to send out a special gratitude to all of you for listening and for your words of encouragement along the way to keep recording. And share a little story that last night, uh, which is perfect given that this is happening today, I met uh, one of our biggest fans, she calls herself, and regular listeners, I was giving a talk at a medical staff dinner, and she came up and talked about how the podcast had resonated and really helped her move through a dark time as an ID doc in the pandemic. And so for me, hearing stories like that really helps to inspire you. And I think as all of us are on journeys of you know, continuing on with things that we're passionate about, but we do need some of that. I often talk about not needing external validation, but it feels amazing when people express gratitude and appreciation. And so I am recording this today with a full heart. So today's episode is going to be another special guest episode. I've actually heard from many of our listeners that you love hearing people's stories about how they've used mindset work and mindfulness and self-compassion in their lives and how it's helped them change and transform. So that is the intention of today's episode, in fact, directly. The intention is we're gonna share a story of a career pivot and the importance of knowing your value and believing in yourself and believing that there is something better. We hope that you'll discover the importance of supporting yourself well as you move through a transition. And we hope you'll take away after listening what can help you find courage and steadiness and alignment during a career pivot? And also, because this question comes up a lot, what the differences between lifestyle medicine and internal medicine, or not internal, but integrative medicine are, and how incorporating these into your practice can allow you to practice your to your full potential. So without further ado, I will introduce Dr. Chitananda, hopefully I said it correct, and we will get started on our conversation. So we met in person. I know we've met virtually uh, at yoga and in other spaces, but we met in person at a Sagrada retreat last May. And so I was hoping that you would introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, so I'm Alicia Chitananda, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Uh -huh. And yeah, so I am a family physician, sports medicine physician, and soon to be certified in lifestyle medicine. Uh, I am opening up my own practice, Blissful Lifestyle Medicine, and after making a pivot from June to now. And uh, I also did want to say congrats on the 100,000 downloads. I am honored to be the guest on this monumental episode, and I am happy to say that I have contributed to a lot of those downloads. I listen to your podcast on a regular basis, and it has also helped me through actually this transition. Beautiful. So uh, actually, maybe I'll ask you, how, how do you think it's helped you through the transition? Putting it totally on the spot here, but... <laughs> yeah. So it just, you just have a lot of good nuggets. And actually, one of, one of the reasons I went to Sagrada, you did a, 
you did an episode and I didn't listen to it around Mother's Day because I was catching up, but I you did an episode on Mother's Day. Um, and I so my birthday is around Mother's Day. So I have a double whammy and I told my husband I wanted to go somewhere and I've always wanted to do like a yoga retreat. And I, I, then I saw that you were doing that. I've, I've seen, I've seen people recommend your uh, retreats on different Facebook groups. And I was like, wait, she has a yoga retreat for CME the week of my birthday and a week before Mother's Day. I'm like, I want to go to this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was, so one of your episodes helped with that. And I you just have so many, I don't know, with different uh, just different mindfulness practices that um and and pearls on transition. I, I on the spot I can't think of like, yeah. all of them, but, well, but that just, specifically led me to you. <laughs> I was thinking about the that Mother's Day episode was um and it's actually been released twice because people love it so much. But the the concept was to take care of yourself first and yeah. not to wait for someone to do the thing, read your mind and do the thing for you. And that you should gift yourself as a mother what it is you really want, whatever that is. And I remember you actually saying that when you arrived at Sagrada, that it was that episode and that's why I'm here. And I'm so glad yeah. I came. And so <laughs> I actually did want to begin actually with that since that's where we met how um i'm curious just sort of what your experience was it sounded like number one you gave yourself permission to go this came up in my talk last night someone saying they were waiting you know their medical system needed to give them permission or we often wait for our families to give us permission and yet you stepped right up and gave yourself permission for your birthday and mother's day yeah. and after doing that um i would love to hear about what your experience was like or what you thought was helpful in you were right before this change, um, a couple of weeks before making a big change. And how did it help you? Yeah. So I, I mean, I had booked it before I knew I wanted to make a change and I thought one was coming up. So I thought it would be helpful. And then it ended up working out because I was, I had given my notice a few weeks before um, going to Sagrada and was leaving probably like a month and a half later and it, I mean, Sagrada really is just, it, it's, it's a magical place. <laughs> it's not too ritzy. It is just calm, relaxing. You just have this chance to slow down, but you're also, you're present with other female physicians that haven't had the same journey, but you all have your own journey and can all take things from other, other people's journeys. And I think that is so powerful to have the, you know, camaraderie, the group coaching, as well as some one-on-one -on -one coaching in the setting of just downtime, <laughs> taking care of ourselves. Not, and the big thing um, was uh, your husband's cooking. Um, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's a big so plus. It's a big plus. It, it's all a big of us. Plus. I mean, it's delicious. It is healthy. It, I mean, talk about lifestyle medicine, yeah. whole food plant based, and you know, and I, I didn't have to worry about cooking or planning meals for myself or my kids or my husband. Like I, I didn't have to do any meal plan, even on vacations. Like you have to think, oh, what, where are we going to eat? What are the kids going to want? What am I going? I don't have to worry. Is this healthy? Like this is. It was all healthy. It was all delicious. Everybody loved it. Yeah. Um, and then of course the yoga, I mean, the yoga at a retreat, last, last but not least. Yeah. No, yoga I, retreat. <laughs> I'm giggling because you said you came because it was a yoga retreat, but that's the last thing, which is totally fine. And I take no offense at it. Um, uh, because, uh, you know, all of that. it's very intentional to blend together. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I think we think, I, I will actually say many people think they're going like, because they're going to yoga retreat and yet it's so much more than that. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the yoga was fantastic and the spin on it that you put in the retreat in person, I, I mean, it, it was just, there's just something about it that you can't get, like you can't get it necessarily at a studio because it's the same people and you all do coaching and you kind of, you do this thing where you coach through yoga 
<laughs> yes, I do. I do. So, like, it's you coaching yoga. Yeah. Yeah. You, you like say just what I'm like, oh, I needed to hear that, like, during yoga. And um, I don't know if you always do this, but you had us pick out little um, yeah. intentions, like word intentions. And I I love that, that because it, it, also like there is also something magical about that too it's just like oh this is telling me to be more peaceful at peace with and then you can come up with like what you want or what you feel you need uh to have peace through your yoga practice um and it it, so it's just I mean just everything about it and I get to do yoga in my pajamas I mean yeah wonderful that's pretty pretty awesome and so (laughs) when you left and went home what do you think you brought with you or how did it and how did it help you in that because you were right about to have a transition a few weeks later well I definitely felt lighter I mean I think the I yeah I think I actually got rid of a -hmm. lot of things and that was my biggest takeaway is you know um it just I I got rid of a lot of feelings of you know I I you know or I I was more accepting and more uh I just I guess just yeah just accepting of you know what was about to happen just going through everything and I also um I felt I before I went in the back of my mind I didn't even realize it was there there was this question of not enoughness am I enough to carry this through Mm. and leaving I I felt like I was enough like maybe and some of your coaching was like well what if it's all gonna work out and and the you know so those mindset shifts are what you know what I brought back and then just this lifting off of like hey I'm not I'm not I'm not good enough like who am I to do this like I can't I'm not a business person how do I go out on my own but you know it's like people people do it and you learn the Krebs cycle I can learn this yeah I think you left um and also in hearing how you're approaching it now with a trust in yourself and a trust in the process and yes that maybe you came with the word that came to mind when you were talking was you you let go of the judgment and you let go of the need to control it and you were sort of like I'm just here um I have this vision of you like floating on a river you know and sometimes there's rapids and sometimes you're kind of stuck in the I don't know the swirl that's not going anywhere the eddy and then but you seem like you're um just talking to you today in just this very peaceful spot about it It yep it's like boat pose yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and I, um, maybe we'll talk about that now, since we've been talking about yoga, I know you just finished yoga teacher training and yeah. I think it's, it's really fun to infuse like the poses actually have meaning well beyond what we do with our bodies. And so do you want to tell just a little bit about your yoga teacher training and your, your approach to yoga? Yeah. So I, um, they happened to have a yoga teacher training the week after I left. And I, so I kind of made a last minute decision. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just going to, I've been, I'm, it was another chance thing. Like, I'm like, this just lines up perfectly. Why don't mm-hmm. I just do yoga mm-hmm. teacher? I want to do it eventually because yoga to me, it's not just about the movements it's about the mindset as well behind it mm-hmm. and I wanted to I wanted to get more into that um and I actually to go back to what you were just saying during yoga teacher training what I love the most is actually the mythology behind a lot of the poses and then incorporating that into you know the in like a practice one of the things that I think is really integral to transitions that we often don't think about is supporting ourselves well, i.e. supporting yourself with mindfulness and supporting your nervous system. And as you mentioned, you know, you left Sagrada feeling, I'm going to use the word fully nourished, not just with Mark's food, but the magic of the place and the community and all of that. And that's one of the things I talk about in, for people transitioning that they need, like you can't transition on empty. You can't change on empty. Um, you can, but it doesn't turn out well. Um, So I think that, that you're just describing how you took this beautiful care of yourself um, in advance of the transition and during, and 
the sort of yoga philosophy. And to me, it's embodying like the mind body piece, which I know is a huge part of lifestyle medicine. And you are um, a DO and it's a big part of that as well. And so it strikes me as the perfect thing for you to do as a training um, to integrate into what you're going to do next. Oh, yes, absolutely. I, I think it it just fits with both lifestyle medicine and I'm doing osteopathic manipulation in my practice. And I, I mean, my plans are to incorporate yoga practices into both really having, you know, get patients centered before we talk about lifestyle changes. Right. And also, I mean, with osteopathic manipulation, uh, it is so easy to incorporate <laughs> yoga. Yeah. Actually, some of the moves are breath work. Um, it could be breath work. And some of the moves you uh, you were doing on yourself <laughs> during yes. Sagrada and you didn't yes. know it uh, with the- with uh, Occipital the, uh, release for yeah. um, headaches, for example. Yeah. 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 Um, I think there's tremendous overlap. And I very much like to think of yoga as medicine. Um, and maybe it's not medicine for a problem. It's like preventive care medicine, but it can also be um, a way of not just relieving stress. It's it's not at all in my mind exercise. It's a way of working with the body you have and taking care of whatever it's working on at the moment. And sometimes we have physical things we're working on and sometimes they're emotional things and yoga helps with all of those. So I thought um, we might pivot to sort of talking about your pivot. And one of the things I wanted to reflect on, because you mentioned it at the beginning, was um, your pivot was, was supported quite a bit by coaching, but it wasn't really running away from something that you didn't like and that you had actually, and I so often talk about this, you'd gotten to a point where you could stay and it would have been fine, but you mm -hmm. really wanted to do something else. You had something else to give to the world or more to... Um, you know, more out there for you. And so um, not only did you support yourself well with mind body, you also really worked to get yourself into that space, which I always say is the space to make you. So it's so clear from that space, what you want to do. And it makes that transition just much more steady. Do you want to tell a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I think when I was first starting with coaching, I was like, well, they're going to tell me how I can get from here to my own practice over here and then they people were like no 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 you have to you be that. <laughs> okay with where you are and I was like how I don't know I don't understand uh and then you know I did you know some inner work on you know what what do I want and how am I talking to myself every day I think those were my two main questions what is my why and everybody has a different why. I have multiple whys, come to find out. Uh, but the main one is I want to be more present and a good role model for my kids. Um, so that is the top why. And then, you know, all the others kind of fall below it. Um, and, you know, my, my second is, you know, I want to bring wellness to my patients in the best way for like possible that like get kind of optimize my strengths mm -hmm. to, um, give to them and, and really figure out how to get them well. And with family medicine, I got to a point family and sports. I, I, I did get to a point where I was like, you know, I am. I'm actually, I, I'm actually okay. Like if I, if I had to stay, I would, I would be okay staying. I, I don't think that this is to my full potential though, because if I try to do more lifestyle medicine here, then I am compromising my time with my kids. I am going to be spending, I'll be spending more time with patients, which is great, but then I'm going to be spending more time charting on the weekends. And you know what, that is Mm -hmm. not negotiable. So how do I pivot? Um, and, you know, once you get through the talking to yourself kindly and non-judging and, you know, getting rid of this not enoughness, it, it, it's, it's funny how the channels of creativity and like, you know, just, just open up. I think, I, I think it was during our one-on-one -on -one in Sagrada, actually, I, I told you, 
that I am not a, I think I said I wasn't a flexible or creative person. And <laughs> then you, you said, you said to me, I don't know if I believe that, but we'll get back to that. And I, you know, I, I, you know, that's one of the things that sometimes my mind would just circle back to. And I'm like, wait a second, maybe Jesse is right. <laughs> well, or maybe you just gifted that thought that like, you know, maybe, maybe I could be creative. And well, then- and- and I'm going to interrupt here just because it's funny. If I had told you, you know, you are creative and flexible, you wouldn't have believed me, right? Because you weren't ready. For no, it. I would have been like, so, no. as you just said, I only introduced the possibility that maybe that wasn't true. And sometimes it has to be just like this little tiny crack. And then you thought about it and you were like, huh, maybe. And so I often have talked in the podcast about gifting someone belief. Sometimes yeah. you just have to gift them the possibility. Um, and the invitation. And that was what happened there is you were like, oh, maybe I am flexible and creative, or maybe I want to be. I actually think you are, but you could also want to be, and or maybe you could figure out how to be. Yeah. And now I think I am flexible and creative. Yeah. I just, of course you are. You always were, by the way, but that's fine. <laughs> but now I believe it. You you believe it. Now I believe it. <laughs> well, and I, I guess I did gift you belief, but in a creative and flexible way because <laughs> that was what was the way that it was going to seep into those cracks and 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 let you do it. Tell us a little bit about um, lifestyle medicine versus integrative medicine, because I will just mention that I coach with a lot of people who are wanting to do something different, or they're intrigued by lifestyle medicine or integrative medicine. They're trying to figure out how to practice in a more aligned way, and they're mm -hmm. not even sure what the difference is. Do you want to yeah. share with that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I think there's a lot of confusion because there's a there is a lot of overlap. Mm -hmm. Um so the lifestyle medicine basically has six evidence-based pillars. Um so nutrition, exercise, sleep, social connection, um, oh my goodness, uh stress management. How did I forget that one? And <laughs> avoidance of risky substances. Mm -hmm. Um so it focuses more on those prescribing those lifestyle changes uh, through like behaviors of change models to um, improve high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity. Also, I think helps with symptom digestive issues, migraine. It, it can help with a lot of things. Um, and but in in some of those pillars, a lot of the it like is a lot of like the integrative um, medicine. I, I guess ideology ideologies. Um, because uh, integrative medicine is combining kind of, I think of it as combining kind of Western traditional medicine with evidence-based complementary, like alternative medicine. But there is so much overlap <laughs> between the two uh -huh. because, you know, integrative has a lot of nutrition as well. The mind-body connection, there's acupuncture, aromatherapy, music therapy. I, I mean, you could argue that all those are stress management and, it, you know, there. so there's, and there's physical activity with integrative. The, the training's a little bit different too. Um, for lifestyle medicine, you need um, 10 credits, CMEs in person, 30 online, and then take the board exam. And then you have to do a um, patient a follow-up patient, uh, which can be yourself. Um, ah, and uh, that's what I am. That's what I'm doing for mine. Um, and then for integrative, I believe you have to do a fellowship. Yeah. If I'm not a mistaken. couple of years. Yeah. I like to think of it in my mind, the lifestyle medicine, you mentioned the word prescription and it's a little bit more prescriptive and it's a little less flexible. Funny. Since we're talking about flexibility <laughs> yeah. right before this, but it's sort of um, a more rigid way of thinking about interventions. Um, it's very, not that integrative medicine is not evidence-based, but it is more in the traditional medicine mm -hmm. style of approaching health. Um, yeah. Although I think it's more preventive and health focused and, yeah. and integrative medicine to me is more in my, this is just my loose definition, more about the herbs and more about um, alternative yeah complementary. It includes training in sort of acupuncture and other um, types of interventions. Ayurveda. Yeah. And Ayurveda. So I think um, to me, it's almost um, a more holistic approach that, that just allows almost everything falls under integrative medicine, <laughs> including traditional medicine. But yeah. it, to me, 
that's the difference. And it is a structured fellowship that takes a couple of years and you participate in a cohort. And there's only a few programs in the country so far. I bet there will be more. And so yes. to me, you really, um, it's funny. I'm now thinking that, of course, you picked lifestyle medicine because as you were entering this from the beginning, right, you didn't see yourself as the flexible one. And it is the one that's just more um, I like the word more woo and more flexible and more sort of seeping in in a less organized way as you're thinking about um, a human and how you're going to approach improving their health. Uh, lifestyle medicine has a more structured approach. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think I thought when I was first going into it before, I mean, it, with lifestyle medicine, you get kind of taught all the all like integrative functional, all the differences too. I was thinking more integrative as like prescribing a lot of herbs and supplements. Yeah. And I was like, well, I don't know, like if I want to get into all that, I want to just do these, <laughs> you know, I, think I want the to other, do pillars. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is that so many people hem and haw about the decision and you kind of just have to make a decision. You can do one and do the other. It doesn't matter. And, yeah. um, I love that you just jumped in and said, I'm just going to do this same way. You sort of said, I'm just going to jump in and do the yoga teacher training. What do you think is allowing you to just sort of like know what's aligned for you and try it with, of course, the, the willingness to try something different if it doesn't work. I I think holding on to that belief, it's going to work out. And if it doesn't, then I'll pivot and do something else. But I honestly, it's, it, you know, they, I, well, I am, you know, I, although I am flexible, I am a planner. So I, you know, I have backed up things. So I'm like, if it doesn't work out, then I have, I have other, I have other things because my family, you know, financially, that is important. I'm half the breadwinner. Yeah. We're kind of equal. So, you know, that's important. And I, I have, plans in case it doesn't work but then I also can be just more of my authentic self and say well if people want to come to me come to me if you don't I it's not going to be a burden on my family if you don't come to me I you come to me because you want to come to me because you're ready to come to me yeah. um and and I I want to take care of people that are ready to make these changes and work with them what I hear you saying is that you're really trusting your authentic self and going with what feels aligned. And mm -hmm. I actually wanted to reflect on the fact that you have backup plans and you're a planner, which, you know, sometimes people think, well, in coaching, we're just going to tell someone it's all going to be okay in the end, just believe it. But for someone who's a backup plan person, that isn't actually, you're first of all, not going to believe it. Say, well, I'll believe it, but I'm also going to have the backup plans. And so it's really one of the ways I see you supporting yourself so well through the transition is knowing exactly who you are. And so someone who's a planner and needs backup plans also has that in their back pocket as they step off into a whole new venture with the belief it's going to work out. But you're it's almost like you can have the courage to do it because you have these plans, which you hope you don't need. But if you do, they're there and they're sort of there. It's um, I often say, what would kindness do? It's very kind to yourself to have them there as a just in case. It, and there are backup plans that align with my why yeah. or one of my why. So if a if there is a backup plan that comes up that I'm like, no, that's not that's not me. That's, a, you know, if I reflect on it and I'm like, no, that's not me, then I'm okay with saying, I okay with saying no there. I, I have, I have worked hard on that one as well, because that that's been like saying no to things. I, I feel like in medicine, we say yes a lot. So yes to everything and don't put those boundaries up, but there, there are boundaries that I have. And now I can say, no, that does not serve me. I know I'm a planner and it would probably help in some ways, but it is not helping with, you know, improving the patient doctor relationship for the healthcare system. That's one of my, that's one of my other ones. <laughs> I'm thinking that when you know yourself well and you are move, you're, it's much easier to, I always say saying no is hard, but if you're just acting in alignment, you're like, wow, that's out of alignment. It's not going to work for me. I think it's much easier to sort of say no. And they're almost, in my mind, not boundaries because you're standing up tall for who you are. And you're like, yeah, that's not going to work. 
It's not going to be in this space of who I am, because I have the sense that the, those no's are not costing you. Like sometimes people are talking about boundaries and no's, and they're very expensive because they're really having to sort of put up a force field and they don't have the inner strength and wisdom and trust that to say yes or no. And yet, as I hear you talk, you have created that. Do you think that's true? Yeah. Absolutely. And I think it's the, I think it was that inner work that I did first on and writing it out. What are my, what, like, what yeah. do I want to accomplish? Yeah. And, you know, and then making sure with each decision, if I'm questioning a decision, what's my, why does it align? Yeah. And I think the other thing that I hear you saying, and I'm wanting people who are listening to hear, you've continued to support yourself well. You're very clear about what you need, the time you need, the space you need, and you're very aware of sort of the urgency bias. And I don't need to move through this as quickly. That's where mm -hmm. you come back to this. It'll work out well in the end. And I can trust that. And I guess you have your backup plans too, just in case. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. So if people wanted to um, work with you or find out more about your new practice, Blissful Lifestyle Medicine, how will they find you? Uh, so they can go to my website. It's www.blissfullifestylemedicine.com. I am also on Instagram, um, Alicia Chitanen, the should be under that or blissful lifestyle medicine. I also have a Facebook page, blissful lifestyle medicine, um, or they can find my personal pages as well. And I'll put a link in the show notes. And I meant to ask you because I love the story about um, why is it called blissful lifestyle medicine? So, um, so blissful lifestyle medicine came about because, um, so my last name, my, my husband is, um, of Indian descent. So, uh, my, my last name is, if you take, um, the word it's Sat Chitandana, um, in, um, Sanskrit, I believe yeah, in Sanskrit, it means blissful consciousness of the mind. And that's actually a, um, a Hindu philosophy about, you know, having it's blissful consciousness and um, kind of trying to get to nirvana sort of thing. Um, and it's just about but but it has part of my last name in it. So it just, uh, it, so it, it just seemed like it, it lined up with what I wanted. One of my patients actually pointed it out. She's like, that's why I found you. <laughs> ah, well, and it's again, just sort of one of these random, perfect things that aligned and hopefully yeah. it will bring you more bliss as you practice it and your patients more bliss in their lives. Um, yeah. So how beautiful that it aligns with your last name. So yes. any last words you want to share with anybody listening, anything that we didn't touch on that feels important to you? I would just say that, you know, if I, for anybody that's thinking of uh, making a transition, just um, make sure you do go back to your why and don't and make that why something meaningful to you. Don't make it. I had somebody tell me my why is to make more money. Well, you can make more money doing underwater basket weaving. Like it, it, what, <laughs> what, 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 fills your cup like what is your real why have it mean something and if you have problems I, I like start with why by uh, Simon Sinek um, and also pay attention to the inner dialogue in your head um, I, you might you might not be as nice to yourself as you think you are love that <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today and I will um mentioned that the last two retreats at Sagrada this year are full, but there is some space in the spring of 2024 and I am working on a few fall dates. So hopefully those will be available soon. I know some people are real planners and plan far in advance like you did. Mm -hmm. So I would love to have you come and experience the magic and it really is magical. I think it's, we had a hard time describing it because it's hard to describe and uh, you won't regret it is what I'll say. Um, you will not. I will concur. And then um, you can also join me. I do transition coaching and the next transition group is going to start in January. It goes from January to June. It's called Transition Well. And 
it specifically for people in transition, because I truly believe that you need to support yourself while in transition, having been through it myself and helped lots of people through it. Um, supporting yourself well, whether it's with a retreat and taking home a sort of a toolbox of things that you can use or having um, coaching sessions on a regular interval with other people transitioning to create a group and uh, so, um, safety. So reach out if that's of interest and we would love it if you left us stars and reviews so more people will find the podcast and get to benefit from some of this wisdom. Please stay on after the sound of the singing bowl for today's mindful moment. As always, if you want to declutter your mind, be more present, and start truly living your one wild and precious life, come find us at the mindfulhealerspodcast.com. Work with one of us. Work with both of us. Start or up-level your mindfulness practice. Discover how mindful coaching can change your life. Or even better, do both as part of our Mindful Healers programs and retreats. You can find links to find out more about our programs and join our communities at themindfulhealerspodcast.com. Reach out and get started on your journey to a life better lived today. The content of this podcast is not meant to be medical or life advice. If you choose to participate in our mindful moments, please do so safely. All right, everyone. Uh, this is Alicia Chitanand. Um, I am going to take us today to uh, visualize a peaceful place. This is a tool I like to use when I am feeling overwhelmed or having a lot of strong emotions. And so if you are in a safe place to participate in this, um, please um, have the option to close your eyes or lighten your gaze. And let's take a couple of deep breaths here. And let's put one hand on top of our heart and the other on top of it. Release that oxytocin and notice how you are feeling right now. Notice how you're feeling in your mind. Notice how your muscles are feeling if you feel any tension. Do this without judgment. Notice how your chest is feeling. Notice your breath in and out. And then bring yourself to a room to start. It has, you're on a white comfy chair and there's white walls around you and a white ceiling and floor. And when I count down from five, uh, the walls will fall away and you will be in the most beautiful place you've ever seen. At this time, feel free to keep your um, hands at, over your heart or place them in whatever position is most comfortable for you. And in five, four, three, two, one, the walls are falling away and you are in the most beautiful place that you have seen. It is a peaceful place. And pay attention to where it is. Are you in a meadow, beach, forest? Is there a particular season that it, that it is right now? What's the temperature? And what's the weather? Is it sunny? Is there some rain, partly cloudy? 
Um, pay attention to what you see. Do you see grass, trees, waves? Do you see anyone with you? Or are you by yourself? Now pay attention to what you hear. Do you hear any animals? Is it quiet? Do you see hear a stream running past? Take a second and see what you are um, pay attention to what you smell. Do you smell salty water? Grass, trees, leaves, snow. Now pay attention to how the air feels on your skin. How your clothes feel on your body. What temperature do you feel? How does the ground feel beneath your feet? And take a minute to see if you taste anything. Do you uh, taste anything in the air? Did you just eat something? And then lastly, what do you feel in your body as you're in this beautiful, safe place? And when you're ready, open your eyes.